Thank for being today with you. Sorry for my English. And, uh, if I have troubles, I will ask my colleagues for helping me. <laughs> but uh, my, my second language is French, and, uh, but it's, it's not so common to practice the French. And uh, for me, for my job, I need to speak in English every time. I want to I want to talk about bears, and I think I have 50 minutes for doing that. A little bit less. Yeah, and uh, it's a little bit complicated to summarize, you know, years and years of research in 50 minutes, because trying to understand pears is not so easy, you know, we have, because we have different varieties, we have different growing conditions, and maturity, and you know, post harvest behavior are key points. And uh, in AgroFresh, we have been working during years trying to understand the pear system and how the pears will ripe and what kind of technologies we can use in each case. And uh, I want to start with a short introduction about the AgroFresh and the R&D. You know, from the beginning, when we started with YMCP around the world, research and development have been, you know, a base for building our business around the world. You know, our idea is to generate knowledge for the growers, for the customers, you know, for, for helping them to understand, you know, their needs and uh, solving their problems. And uh, today around the world we have 30 researchers working in different areas, different countries, running different, you know, R&D projects, adjusted, you know, to, to the needs for each region, for each country. And uh, since some years we have our own labs. We have two labs in, in, in Jackima, one lab in Jackima, another in Wenatchee, in the middle of the Alpo and the Peru region in the US. We have another laboratory in Davis, California consecrated almost 100% for decay control because today we are we are you know developing tools for decay control in post harvest and in South America we are lucky because in Chile we have a lab it's an agrofresh lab in, in the middle of the Alpha region and it is in Curico and also in Argentina we started last season with a pilot project you know with a with a laboratory with uh, you know one of our you know the cooperator in Teragro, we have a, a small lab over there for running research, basically on pears. In Argentina, 70% of my research program is based on pears. As you can see, you know, in my region we have a lot of crops, a lot of different situations. We are working one day with, with apples, another day with pears, plants, kiwi fruits, persimmons, and in the case of Brazil, tropical fruits like mangoes, avocados, tomatoes, guavas, etc. Only for showing you our focus on, on research, last year we had in the region 180 re different research projects, different crops, different situations, different technologies, quite concentrated on pears. 20% of our projects were on pears, apples, kiwi fruits, plants, table grapes, melons, other crops. But 180 research projects were done in the region. And uh, we're going in the, the present, into the presentation today, pairs, and uh, this is our topic. You know, uh, sorry, so apples. For pears. Pears, I, I want to talk a little bit about some common problem, problems for all the pear varieties. You know, yellowing and uh, you know, this change in color from green to yellow is a common problem for all the varieties. And in general, the customers, they are, they are asking for green pears. Why? Because in their mind, a green pear means low storage, low post-harvest life. You know, because in several varieties, you know, there is a, a good correlation between the color change and the softening. It's fast, you know, go from yellow to a soft pear. And for this reason, this, you know, change from dark green to a light green, is a problem for, for some of our customers. Softening, for sure, is another problem for all the varieties. And, uh, you know, because there is a balance. We need to keep firm our fruit for being exported, for being commercial, commercialized. But after, when we reach the market, we need to soft. We need to have this softening. It's complicated to keep this balance. You know, in a storage, keep firmness. But after, in the final point, in the final market, we need to soft and to soft in a, in a short period. Physiological disorders and a scalp today is a big problem. We have been talking today about TBA and endoxyquin 
and how complicated are you know in some markets like Europe because of residues and uh, we are on face today in a world without EDA, without the toxic queen for you know countries like Chile where we are exporting 90% of our production would be for a different exporting market and dehydration is another problem you know scaffing you know mechanical damage are problems are common problems for all the varieties I want to focus my presentation in difference difference between varieties, you know, because not all, not all the varieties will ripe in the same way. Even if ethylene is a common point for all of them, you know, ethylene will coordinate the ripening process, like other fruits, you know, like other fruits. But the ripening behavior is totally different variety per variety. And the researchers during years have been, you know, <coughs> giving name to the different groups, and we have the summer pears, the winter pears, and in the middle we have all the varieties. And the breeders, they have been working and crossing, you know, pears from both groups and generating new varieties. And in the middle, we have something like the researchers called Chilean requirement. That is the period in cold storage that the pears or some varieties needs for starting with the ethylene production. And not only with the ethylene production, also with the ethylene perception. All the, all the mechanisms, how, how many days in cold storage will take, you know, for having all the mechanisms associated to ripening in place for ripening in the right way. And in the middle, we have a lot of tools for managing pears in post harvest. Here we have an example. Summer pears, William is the good, is a very good example for this group, you know, summer pears. In general, for summer pears, the ethylene production will start at harvest. We can be harvesting and our fruits will be producing ethylene. You know? In the other side, we have the winter pears. And in this group, pagans and then use are good examples. And in this case, for those varieties, we need to spend a time in cold storage for starting with ethylene production. Those fruits will not start with ethylene production at harvest. Only if we are harvesting very, very late in the middle of the winter, perhaps, but normally at harvest, those varieties will not produce it. Must be for a period in cold storage. And this is a complication, you know, because we don't have good harvest parameters for this group of pears, because firmness is not a good indicator. A starch, not. And color changes, yeah, could be, but it's not so clear for me, but to deal with this group of pairs is complicated. Which pairs are complicated? Scout development today is a subject in the table. All of us, we are discussing about alternatives for controlling the skull. And I want to talk at the end of my presentation a little bit about the skull and the susceptibility that the pairs have to skull because the model is, dif is different to apples. Until now, we have been working with apples and knowing about the susceptibility to develop a skull and post harvest for the apples based on maturity and harvest in the pears, the picture is totally different. What happened with the summer pears? This, those are, are data coming from our research in Argentina. Here we have Williams and red barlets, and this is ethylene production at harvest. In this, in this X, we have days after full bloom. That in the case of Argentina is a very good indicator, you know. We, we have a very nice correlation between days after full bloom and ethylene production. It's really nice, the correlation that we have. And we can define, you know, different storage period basic on days after full bloom. And basically because we have this good correlation with ethylene. And you know, this is the normal green William, and this is the, you know, the mutation, the red one. And look at the ethylene production. It's really high. If I put you know, a gala here in the middle, perhaps the ethylene production for my gala will be in this area. Red Williams can produce a lot of ethylene at harvest. And where is my, where is, where is my harvest window? For Williams, under the Argentinian condition, will start in 100 day, days after full bloom and will, be, uh, and will finish in 130 days. This is my window for harvest William. And based on the ethylene production, we can segregate fruit, and you know, fruits coming from the first part of the season, near 
a hundred days and no more than a hundred and ten or a hundred and eight days will be for long storage. For those fruits, we can, if we use smart fridge and control atmosphere, all the tools, fast cooling. We were talking today about fast cooling and how to keep green color. For going to long storage, we need to do all these kind of things. Fast cooling, smart fridge, and perhaps cultural atmosphere for going with those Williams for more than four, five, or six months in some cases. After we have another important part of the, 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 the harvest window where we have a lot of fruits, and you know, in this group of fruits, mm -hmm. and especially at the end of this, this part of the harvest window, some fruits will start with the ethanol production. And for this reason, this group of fruit will be for a medium storage, two, four months, no more than that. And in this case, at the end of this period, at, at the end of this second part of the harvest, some fruits will be at harvest, turning from dark green to a dark green, light green. And you know, for this reason, it could be only for medium and not long storage. And some seasons, when we have problems with the thinning and the growers didn't adjust the, don't adjust the load of the trees and they must wait for fruit size, we can reach this point. And we are harvesting very, very late with ethanol production at harvest and a lot of ethanol production. And even if we use a small fruit in this segment of fruits, those fruits will be for short storage. Because a part of the post-harvest life is losing in the field. And we will store those fruit for a short period. Let me show you some, some results using the smart fresh on Williams because in the Argentinian market, Williams is the most important variety for them. They are, they, they are pushing for, for putting more Williams, for planting more Williams, for having more orchards because they have a pretty nice William and the internal market in Argentina is asking for Williams for a while, for three, four, five months. If you can put a William, you have good prices. The internal market like all the varieties, but you know, William is the best variety and they are planting more William. And uh, we have a pretty nice volume today and the people, they must manage this volume in post harvest. And for us, working with a smart fridge, you know, we, we, we have th three different, you know, segments uh, for our technical recommendations. We have the first segment, the, the early mature fruit. It's not an immature fruit. It's, uh, you know, a fruit at physiological maturity. And uh, this segment, with more than 17 pounds, will be for long storage. And with a smart fridge, we can keep those fruits for more than four months, four, five, or six, in relationship to the to the combination with other technologies or fast cooling and harvest. And we can keep firmness. And uh, we can reach, you know, and uh, you know, uh, softening or anything a stage uh, after 14 days or perhaps a little bit more for some cases. But we can we can ripe if we work with the the middle part of the harvest, you know, and we apply smart fruit, we can go between two, four month cold storage. And with this profile in terms of softening, you know, this line, 12 pounds for us, you know, is the limit for sporting fruit, for moving Williams to, to Brazil, for example. Below that, it will be complicated because, you know, mechanical damage can occur. And eight pounds, you know, is the limit for you know, for the supermarkets, for moving the fruit, for putting the, the, the fruit in the shelf, and for this, these fruits are right at home in good condition. This is uh, another result with the smart fruit in firmness retention for the, the last part of the harvest, you know, with more mature fruit, and this fruit for sure will be for a short storage period, no more than two months. And in this case, the growers, they are using a smart fruit as a tool for doing something like an upgrade in the fruit, and they are not trying to change this short store storage fruit for a medium or a long because it's not possible. You know, with the, the ethanol production that those fruits have at harvest is not possible to do. We were we have been, you know, 
listening at, at the colleagues about you know the temperature and how important it is to, to use the temperature for keeping green color and uh, on pierce is really important the cooling and the, the fast cooling for you know for keeping green color if we want to keep green color we need to go fast in our cooling and you know an alternative is to use higher cooling for going fast and also for avoiding dehydration but if we don't have this possibility, if we don't have this, the, the possibility to, to use hydro cooling, fast cooling with air could be an option. But we need to we need to go fast in the cooling. Why? Basically because if we if we have a pair, this is kosher pair. This is an important variety for us in Chile because we have an important market in Europe. You know, in Italy especially, this is a small pair. You know, and the growers every time they are pushing for a late harvest because they want to increase the size. But you know, they are harvesting too late. If if we if we talk about fairness of harvest with this variety, we are talking about twelve pounds. Twelve pounds. This is the normal commercial harvest. And we need to, to keep the green coal. For doing that we need to go fast in the cooling because otherwise if we stay at five degrees, five for a while, two, five or seven days at, at harvest, you know, we can increase in the effort of production. And this increase in the ethical production is, you know, is affecting this green color because after several years working with pears, in my PhD I was working with melons, and in melons we have the same phenomenon. With a small amount of ethylene, we can produce a change and, you know, go from the, the green to the yellow, chlorophyll degradation. The, 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 the chlorophyll degradation is regulated by, by a, a small amount of ethylene. Softening, for having softening in our fruits, we need to have more ethylene. And in pears, it, it seems that the system is the same. And a small amount of ethylene in the environment can produce, you know, a change in the core. Some cases, not a change in the firmness, but yes, in the core, we can have changes. If, if we keep our fruits for some days at 5 degrees Celsius, and, and in this variety, after 30 days plus a period in shelf life, we will have a softening, you know, a fast softening compared to the control, you know, in this case. And when we apply smart fresh, you know, near harvest, even if we are working with 5 degrees Celsius, or we are working with fruit that was fast cooling, you know, we have an effect in firmness retention. But the message here is we need to go fast in the cooling because one point we can keep green color if we delay, you know, the smart fruit application of we own, if we keep our fruits under, you know, not warm conditions, but five degrees Celsius for a while, we can affect the color. Dark green means, you know, more green color. And all those fruits here were fast cooling, and all those fruits here were, you know, a slow cooling. And you can see the effect in color retention. With the smart fruit, we can, you know, keep green color when the fruits were fast cooling, or even when the fruits were, you know, keeping at five degrees, but only for two days. If we decide to keep the fruits, or if, if, if we decide to go in a slow cooling, we are affecting, you know, color, even if we are applying a smart fresh. You know, for keeping green color, fast cooling is perhaps the main tool. We have been learning that, you know, ethylene production could be a real problem in our rooms in Argentina for Williams. Those are commercial, you know, data during one season, I think it was in 2011, we were measuring, you know, ethylene inside the rooms, in the heavy space of the rooms, and we were collecting a pretty amount of that. I think were 40 rooms, commercial rooms with uh, Williams during the season. And in some cases, you know, in your rooms you can have, you know, 14 ppm's, 25 ppm's of ethylene, and this could be a problem, you know, if, especially if you are trying to keep, you know, green color, because as I said to you, a small amount of ethylene can produce this change from dark green to light green, you know, can trigger the process. And uh, we have been working with YFCP and, uh, you know, SmartFridge 
for better understand, you know, the competition between ethylene and, uh, you know, 1MCB in the room. And, you know, we know that with one or five PPMs, more than five PPMs, we have problems, you know, with our application and we need to, you know, to, to adjust our concentration in some cases. We have been working in, uh, in to understand, you know, a smart fruit in combination with other technologies because today we, we have available different technologies for keeping fruit quality in post-harvest. And those technologies, for example, are bags, you know. I know that in some cases you are working here with MIP bags, modified atmosphere bags. This is a high humidity bag, and this is a normal perforated bag. And we have been working with the smart fridge, understanding, you know, the behavior of the smart fridge or the fruits treated with the smart fridge in combination with different bags. And this is a, this is an example for Williams. Those those fruits were treated with the smart fridge at harvest and put it, you know, in a macro perforated bag, or treated at harvest with the smart fridge and put it in a high humidity bag. That is a normal. 25 microns bag without any hole, without any perforation, and those are fruits treated with a small fridge and MIP bag. You know, you can see here an, a, a huge, you know, variation in terms of firmness. And today we are looking at to use more, you know, this kind of bags instead to use, you know, MIP bags. I know that for you, patterns is an important variety. For us, it's, it's an important variety too. In Argentina, we have Pacams, that use and Williams as main varieties. In Chile, Pacams today still being the main variety, but in the case of Chile, we are growing, you know, Abate Fidels, Gosha, you know, Carmen and uh, Forel, and uh, some berry bosks. But Pacams has still been an important variety around the world. And we have been working with the Smart Fridge, uh, you know, understanding the, the effect of the Smart Fridge on Pacams because Pagans, as a winter pear, is, is complicated to deal with because, as I said to you, at harvest, those fruit not produce stilet, and we don't have, you know, an indicator based on ethylene. You know, firmness, we will, I will show you that. Some cases it's not, you know, well correlated with the ripening and the maturity at harvest, you know. And uh, we have been working with the smart fridge mainly for long storage, Today is a tool for keeping patterns in long storage of more than 200 and 250 days. It's a good tool for keeping, you know, firmness, for controlling a skull, you know, for long storage. And uh, we are recommending that in, in, in the region, in South America, to use a smart fridge on patterns for long storage, basically because we can keep firmness and the fruit can reach an eating stage, you know, in less than 14 days. That that is good, but we are not recommending today to use smart fresh, you know, in packams, especially in packams coming from the first part of the season, for short or medium storage, because some cases, the fruit in a short storage period, in regular air, will take a lot of time for reaching, you know, an eating stage. And today our recommendation is to apply smart fresh for long storage and not for short or medium, especially for fruits coming from the first part of the season. But as researchers, we have been working during, I think, during the last four years, better understanding you know, the, ripening, the ripening model of patterns and then use. And there are several publications, you know, scientific publications, talking about you know, the children requirement and how important it is to, to keep the food for a while in cold temperatures, you know, for generating all this mechanism for ripening. Genes that are, you know, coding for enzymes that are working, you know, at ethylene biosynthesis level and also at ethylene perception level needs to be turned on with this gene signal and it's important to keep that in mind for working with this kind of varieties, you know, and uh, we have been working in Chile in, in a project understanding patterns growing in different regions because this chilling requirement does how many days we will need in cold storage for ripening that could be 30 days, 45, 60, 90 days. The chilling requirement will be you know defined by growing conditions and maturity at harvest.
those factors are the main factors for defining you know, how many days we need to stay in cool rooms for ripening in a nice way. And this is not only for smart fruits. I'm talking about you know, ripening and maturity of patterns in general. And this is the same phenomenon for dangerous pears. In our experiments, we have different orchards in different locations, some orchards near the coast in Chile, some other orchards in the Central Valley that is, that is very hot, and some other orchards in the mountains, you know, in the south. And the ripening for those patterns is totally different. And if we look at the ethylene production in cool storage, those are weeks in cool storage, and this is the ethylene production, and this is an orchard coming from a warm area, and this is an orchard in a, in a cool area. And those are different maturities, and in between each maturity we have one week. And we are talking about, about 130 days, 140 days after full bloom for the maturity one, you know, for starting. And look at the ethanol production. This is maturity four, a late harvest. You know, in the case of fruits coming from an, an orchard in the south, the ethanol production will start after three weeks or four weeks in cold storage. But for the same maturity in an orchard coming from a warm area, the ethanol production will be a start in the week five. And this is an important consideration, you know, because the softening, the softening and the other changes, you know, like color changes or scalp development will be related at when those fruits will start with the ethanol production. And we have some orchards where the ethanol production will start, you know, soon, 45 days full storage, and the softening will start, you know, in correlation, in correlation with this ethanol production. For some other orchards, we will take less time. 15, 20 days for starting with the ethanol production, and our softening will be correlated. At the end of the day, all those data are helping us for taking decisions, you know, because for this kind of orchards, or for this kind of maturities, perhaps we need to use smart fresh, controlled atmosphere, fast cooling, all the tools that we have available for controlling the ripening, because we are really near to the point when this pair will be an apple, you know, in terms of physiology. Because when the ethanol production will start here in this point, the behavior it will be quite similar to an apple, you know? This is another interesting, you know, photo for, for being analyzed, you know. This is softening for different for the different orchards, you know, from the coast to the mountains, you know, those are in the central valley. And those are, you know, the maturity or the weeks at harvest, you know, first week, 130, 40 days after full bloom. And this is the softening for an orchard coming from a cool area. It seems that we have, you know, a first plateau here and after a fast softening. But for some orchards coming from, you know, warm areas, we have something like a plateau here in the week two and the week three. And trust me, the post-harvest behavior of those fruits are totally different to the post-harvest behavior of those fruits, even if we have one week or one week and a half or two weeks between harvests. This is, this is the effect of a smart fruit applied you know, in different harvests, different growers. Here is a warm area, you know, and this is a smart fruit treated fruit at the harvest. Here we have the control after 150 days cool storage. This is the softening for the control. And this is the picture immediately after cool storage and during shelf life. This is a smart fruit treated fruit. Look at, you know, all those fruits are green and really firm. This is the second harvest for the same orchard control. A smart fruit treated fruit. We have an evolution, but it's not too much. We have firm fruit, not too good for the consumer. Third harvest. This is the control, this is the smart fruit. We are keeping, you know, firm fruit for a while in a warm orchard, even if we are working with a very late harvest. But what happened with the smart fruit in a cool area, in a cool orchard? For the same storage period, this is the softening for the control in the first harvest fruit. This is the smart fruit, you know, profile, softening profile for, you know, fruits coming from the first, you know, harvest period.
look at this difference. You know, here we don't have an evolution, and here we have a clear evolution. The smart fruit fruit are, you know, ripening. And this is good, you know, because at the end of the day, we need to reach the market with soft fruit for, for you know, for the consumer at home. But my message here is, you know, we need to know our growing areas. We need to know our maturity and ripening behaviors. And we can set it up our strategies and our post-harvest technologies based on that. We need to better know, we need to segregate. I think for pears, a key will is segregation. And to know, you know, all those pears will, you know, be in, in, in post-harvest. We have been working during the last, the last time, you know, in uh, generating technologies for, you know, recovery and ripening in pear street with the smart fruit and harvest. You know, and uh, we have been working with temperature as a tool for conditioning those pears. And uh, we have good results. Here we have, you know, uh, fruit treated with smart fridge, and you know, we have, uh, you know, fruit treats with smart fridge, and also fruits treated with smart fridge and with a condition period, you know, and uh, it's a tool. It's a tool. We can unlock pears using temperature, but we need to better understand, you know, how many days we need to have you know, at these temperatures for unlocking the beers. And um, we have been concentrated in these kind of protocols. For us, it's quite important, you know, a transit time, and we need to use this condition, you know, before to, to, to travel to the final market. And it's important to know if we are, you know, starting with the ripening, but it's not too much. Uh, if this, this ripening is, is enough, or it's not too much, <coughs> or not arriving to the final market with another mature fruit. But we have been working with conditioning using different, you know, packagings, you know, MIP bags, <coughs> perforated bags, high humidity bags for understanding. And we have good results. We can we can recover ripening in the smart fruit treated fruit at harvest with different bags and timings. Also, we have been working with other varieties like berry balls in the same way, and low-key pears treated with the smart fruit. Those strategies are have been developed for you know, keeping fruits in good conditions with the smart fruits for short and medium storage period. Today we have a nice window for long storage, uh, but we need to provide to the customers, you know, tools for working with short and medium storage periods. And we have been working in order to develop these kind of tools for providing them, you know, you know, an alternative for unlocking pairs when we're treated with smart fruits at harvest. Today, I know that for all of us, a skull is a problem, and uh, basically because the European community is, you know, is looking at the residues for DBA or the toxic green. And with the smart fruits on apples, we have a pretty nice control of the skull. And the same thing about cure for pears. You know, as the, if the, the mechanism how the skull will occur on pears is the same that we have on apples. Alpha farnesine, this compound, will be oxidated in conjugate trienols, and those compounds will produce the skull. It's the same mechanism for pears than for apples. But the difference is. In more mature fruits, in more mature pears, we have more skull. They can produce and they can synthesize, synthesize more alpha farnesine. If we are delaying the harvest for some reasons, for fruit size, hand labor, hand labor, whatever, if we delay the harvest, we will be increasing the susceptibility of the pears for developing a skull during post harvest. And this is important. Because in the case of apples, we know that early grannies coming from the first part of the harvest season are quite susceptible to develop a skull. In the case of pears, it's the opposite. Early fruits means less skull. This is the effect of a smart fruit controlling a skull. We have a pretty nice control on pears. It's, it's the same control that we have on apples, and it's basically because the alpha-farnesine synthesis is regulated by, by an enzyme 
And this enzyme, well, there are several enzymes, but one of those enzymes is regulated and is strongly regulated by ethylene. And with the SmartFetch, we can control the ethylene, the perception, and the synthesis of ethylene. And by this way, this enzyme has a very low activity, and we have low alpha pharnesine concentrations in the fruit. It's different our mechanism of control compared to DPA. DPA is blocking you know, the oxidation of alpha In our case, we are affecting the synthesis of alpha Now, during the, during the last years, we have been working in order to develop new technologies and new tools for, for the growers in the different regions across the world. And we have been working in a project for you know, applying uh, YFCP in free harvest. And <coughs> we call this formulation or this technology Harvista. I know that my colleagues here in Australia have been working with Harvista at the experimental level for generating data and to support the registration of this technology here. In Argentina and in Chile, we, we, we have been doing the same thing. Last season in Argentina, we started with a, a demo plot program for a new liquid formulation for being applied in a very low uh, volume. We, we are working with this equipment. It's a special equipment for applying Harvista. And this liquid formulation is an oil-based oil -based formulation. And we are applying around 40 liters per hectare with a very nice coverage. You can see in the photos a very nice coverage, even in this kind of waters in Argentina with tall trees, you know. And uh, we have been working on apples and also pears in Argentina. It's quite important for us to control the maturity, especially on Williams, at, uh, you know, in the second or in the, in the third part of the, the, the harvest window. And with the harvester, we can have, you know, a pretty nice firmness retention at harvest, and we can delay the harvest. Some cases in Argentina we have problems with hand labor. We don't have a lot of people or enough people for harvesting in the right moment. And it's interesting to use these kind of technologies for delaying, you know, a part of the harvest for harvesting, you know, fruits in, in, in best condition. And we have very good results in fruit retention. Also, when we are delaying harvest, we can increase size. Because in the case of pears, you know, the, the, the growing curve is exponential. It's different in comparison to the apples, where it's linear. In the case of pears, it's exponential. And if we if we delay one or two weeks the harvest, some cases delaying two weeks the harvest from the commercial harvest, we can increase fruit size and we can move you know the fruits or the size curve to the biggest sizes, and also we can increase in uh, you know in weight you know. If we are producing, I don't know, 100 tons, we can reach 120 because, you know, size increase. Some effects in color retention with Harvista at, at harvest. Also, we have been working during the last years understanding, you know, our technology in combination with other technologies available today in the market for working with pears and apples. And here we have a pretty nice, you know, result combining a smart fridge with DCA and here is a picture in furnace retention immediately after DCA for seven months. Here we have furnace for all the treatments. After five days, room temperature immediately after the cold storage. This is the figure for DCA, fruits without smart fruits. And this is, you know, the picture for some fruits treated with smart fruits, different rates. As an experiment, we were, we were using different rates for knowing, you know, the differences. And, uh, in combination with this technology, with DCA. And this is perhaps the most interesting picture for me because after DCA, in my condition, we need to travel. We need to travel to the internal market or to the final consumer. But in many cases, we need to travel to you know an expert market. And we need to go to Brazil, in the case of Argentinian pears, or in the case of Chilean pears, we need to go to Europe. And uh, we need to have you know, a period in regular air that could be between 15 days in the case of Brazil for some cities in the north, or 30 or 45 days in the case of Chile, thinking in Europe. And uh, this is something interesting, you know, how, you know, the smart fetching combination with DCA can keep fruit condition even after, you know, a regular air period, you know, 
for treatment or, or transit you know, after DCA. That is quite important, you know, how those technologies can be syne or we can we can have a synergy between technologies uh, in some cases. And we need to understand how the technologies can help us and you know where those technologies can help us. This is fruit appearance for this experiment. After five, it is after 15 days regular air plus 10 days 20 degrees Celsius. This is you know the fruit appearance, not so nice for DCA or some rates of a smart fresh. This a long period, you know, 10 days at 20 degrees Celsius. And look at the internal condition. Some cases we can have this you know internal breakdown that is associated to senescent, and a smart fresh can help a little bit. Also, we have been working, especially in Chile, understanding all the, all the pear varieties because we have because the market are paying by big sizes. And uh, when they are delaying harvest for feeding, you know, here we have commercial harvest. We have a fruit around 12 pounds and starting with their food production. And uh, today, a smart fruit is a tool for, you know, the, the growers in Chile that are you know growing a lot of fidels because they can harvest you know near 12 pounds and have big sizes and to keep condition using a smart to studies. This is forel. I know that you are growing a variety that is similar, similar to forel. When we started with the smart fridge of forel in Chile some years ago, our first trial it was to know the behavior of three different maturity stages for L. maturity one, two, and three, and we were characterization, you know, firmness for each maturity, ethanol production, respiration rate, and also understanding, you know, the post-harvest behavior. For for L, some cases, mealiness could be a problem, and can develop mealing texture in post-harvest, especially for fruits coming from the first part of the harvest season. And the growers today, they are harvesting late. They are trying to harvest in an M3 for not having this kind of problems. And we are working with the smart birds for keeping condition in those more mature fruits. But it's important to understand the behavior for each variety and maturities. Maturities is a key point. For knowing that, you know. This is carbon. It's a bicolor variety. It's a pretty nice pair for the European market. But this variety has a lot of problems, you know. One is dehydration. Look at the pedicel. It's like that. It's a huge pedicel. And it can lose a lot of water. Dehydration is one problem. The scuffing is another one. And this is a you know nice, nice example of sometimes the theory. It's not related, you know, it's not, you know, sometimes we don't have positive theories and are negative. And uh, because my approach for this variety was to combine a smart fridge with MIP Max, basically for keeping, you know, the stem green and uh, not to have the hydration. But I saw, you know, fruits coming from the cold room in a really nice shape, green with a very nice stem, but cutting the fruit, they were, they were brown because this variety is really susceptible to CO2 damage. It's similar to Abadifidel, and we need to know that also for you know, setting up you know, our post harvest management. For carbon, another important problem is scuffing. We were talking about scuffing, and scuffing is a real problem for carbon. And uh, with the smart fruit, we can control scuffing. Because talking about the scuffing, perhaps there are three main factors that can affect its development. One is dehydration. If you have a fruit with dehydration, it's more, more susceptible to develop scuffing. Maturity, more mature fruits are more susceptible to develop scuffing and also the temperature and process. Must be 10 or more. And smart fridge can help for controlling the scuffing because we are touching, you know, the part related to sensors, to maturity. And for finishing my, my, my presentation, 
and uh, I want to show you some of our you know, technical recommendations here for Australia. I think Nick and Greg, they can help you more understanding you know, the technology for your needs, for your requirements. But we have been working here in Australia also in order to develop you know, recommendations based on you know, the varieties that you have and the conditions that you have today here. And we have a recommendation from Williams and uh, Williams in regular air control atmosphere and also in patterns. And uh, for finishing my presentation, I want to show you my, my team. This is my team in Argentina. They are working really hard in, in, in order to generate all of those, those data that I, I shared to you today. And uh, this is our lab in the Rio Negro Valley. It's in the middle of the Rio Negro Valley. And, uh, and we are working on that at many of years. And this is my team and my lab in Curico, Chile. And uh, it's a funny time for those guys in off season, but uh, as a creative researcher, I try to put a lot of work in their hands every time. And uh, with this last slide, I want to send you again. I'm so sorry for my broken English, but sometimes, you know, even if I'm trying to set it up my mind in English, it's complicated. You know? Thank you very much. So, lots of questions, I'm sure. Um, we might take a couple and then continue to have a chat over some upcoming team. We might be ready to go up and have a stretch. So, any first questions for Daniel? Dario. Um, you showed those correlation with the different harvesting maturity time mm -hmm. and uh, there was a nice correlation between application of uh, smart fresh yes. and the different results. So the rate that was maturing yes. and slightly less effect because yes. it was much more mature at exactly. harvest. Were they the same um, application of concentration of smart fresh or was it actually changed depending on the maturity? Yeah, it could be, could be a tool actually. But it would, it would be related to the varieties and the conditions. Oh, right, yes. Uh, but it could be a tool. We are running you know, some experiments for knowing much better that. But it could be a tool, mm -hmm. especially in uh, really mature fruits. could be an alternative. But as I said to you, it's quite important to, to understand you know, the variety in your growing conditions. This is quite important. And uh, yeah, it could be, a, could be an alternative. Um, I just, I just noticed your presentation. Obviously, there's an issue with waiting the pairs up at the end after uh, smart fresh. What's the consumer reaction been to those Williams that have had the smart fresh treatment? Have they, have they noticed a slow <coughs> sort of maturing once they bought the product? Has there been any comment or feedback from? Yeah, trees? yeah. Actually, yeah. You know, Williams. I have a lot of Williams in Argentina. In Chile, we don't have Williams, and in Argentina, we have a lot of Williams. And an important part of those Williams will be for internal market. And uh, we can reach the internal market in one day, today, because we are in the Rio Negro Valley in the south, and the main market is in Buenos Aires or Mar del Plata. And we can reach fast this, this market. And uh, you know, at the beginning when we started, several years ago with the Smart Fetching Williams, yeah, some comments are right, you know, especially because some Williams take it, you know, a while for ripening. But today, with our recommendation, uh, you know, based on maturities and storage times, uh, I think we have, you know, our consumers, you know, with, uh, you know, a consistent product, consistent with them in the time. And we are sure that we can reach, you know, an eating stage in five, in between five to 10 days. And it's not a problem. We are still having some comments related to color and firmness. Because with smart fresh, and even with this recommendation in William, with different maturity stages and different storage times, some, sometimes we have a different product that is a not yellow pear, but a pear turning from dark green to light green. But this pear will soft slowly, totally different to a control pair. And in some cases the customer said, okay, I'm receiving, you know, a yellow pair. 
and your product is not working. And we need to go and to explain to our customers, and they go and to explain to their customers that it's a different product. I can remember two years ago, three years ago, we were working with Packams in Chile. And uh, one of my, my customers, they decided to send Packams to Ecuador. And uh, I received a call from the technical department, and they said to me, Daniel, your product is not working because we reached the, the market in Ecuador with yellow packets. And uh, my commercial colleagues, they, they went to, to Ecuador with, uh, with our customer for looking at the packets. And yes, we're not green, green packets. We're packets turning, but when they went over there, one week and a half or two weeks after the first call, the customer in Ecuador, was really happy because for him it was not possible to sell the fruit fast and it was necessary to keep the fruit for a while in Ecuador. And the softening, it was really slow. And the fruits are really nice, beautiful, you know, are not are without scaffing, you know, and uh, it's a different product. But some 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 cases until now we have you know this comment coming from the, the customer. We have this this synchronization between color change and softening is a different product. So it's based on their past experience, so we're comparing what they used to do and it's sort of not behaving the same way. Exactly, exactly. For the customer, you know, this change in color means, you know, few days for selling the fruit. Because williams are quite explosive. They can produce a lot and a lot of ethylene, and they have a fast ripening. But when you have a smartphone,